Has your hair always been gray? Like your whole life? 30s. Like Bugs Bunny, huh? Pretty Bugs much. Bugs Bunny always had gray hair. He did, but that Forever, was that right? was gray. I got silver. What's your huevos like? Dark. Serio? Yeah. Like your eyebrows? It's just yeah. fucking weird. It's damn, just on my head, huh? Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey everybody, welcome to Dr. After Dark. Bring those emails in at drdrafterdark at gmail.com and also 818-253-1693 for the... uh, for all of our voice messages, which you know I love. Uh, and uh, do me a favor, I swing by the streaming shows we do, particularly on Wednesday at 3 o'clock Pacific time. At You can get it, it's it's just called Ask Dr. Drew, but you can get it at drdrew.com. We do it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday typically, but Wednesday is kind of the one that people are kind of interested in now. We've been interviewing all the uh, the silenced folks from the um, the pandemic to see what they have to say, what they've really been thinking. It's fucking hump day, bro. Speaking of silence, uh, let me bring in a gentleman that uh, no attempt at silencing would uh, no. suffice, would be in any way effective. Mike Catherwood is here. Mike, where do you want to promote people? Mikey Likes You? Uh, the Mikey Likes You podcast, uh, at Mike Catherwood on Instagram. Used to be that on Twitter, too, but uh, don't have a Twitter anymore. Why? Someone hacked me, and and they were pretty courteous about it because they hacked me. And like they didn't put out like I hate Jews or anything. The usual it, thing. Like I, like they didn't do the, the, the like, customer. Let's get this guy canceled. It's just little like really kind of almost the type of stuff your friends would do to bust your balls. Mm. Uh, but they did start blocking everyone that followed me. Huh. And then so I, sounds like a jealous woman. Could it have been a female? <laughs> like an ex girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. I. But so I I immediately am like oh well I better take care of this so I do all the the rigmarole and I email the right people. And it was like a day before Elon takes over. Oh, okay. All right. So no, you still appeal to him though. I, I'm, I'm sure, but what, he's a little busy. I'm not only is he a little busy, but that company is in a bit of a, a maelstrom upheaval right now. Yep. And so Mike and I used to do a show called Love Line that many of you know. Most people kind of remember from the 90s because that's when it had the widest distribution in terms of uh, syndication and stuff. And Adam, too. It had Adam. And Ad- it had Adam. And then it had Mike. And yes. uh, we did it for five, six years. I always forget how no, many years. No, more than that. It was... Seven, eight years? Eight years, yes. Wow. Like it's crazy how long I did that show. I did 35 years with that show. That's... That's insane. Preposterous. Yeah. I mean, the even, you and your... Adam was only 11 years. I mean, you're right yeah. in there. Yeah, so no, I... I yeah. um. It's it's really strange. Like Adam was so he's so smart and so funny and his wit is so perfectly suited to sit across from you that it was so strange for me to then take that job mm. because I grew up you were a fan listening to Loveline. Mm-hmm. I grew up in Southern California and and, and not only Loveline but K Rock the station its flagship station was kind of a big deal. And I I grew up I I prank called you twice. <laughs> Twice. Do you remember what you asked? Yes. Uh, one time it was shitty. <laughs> one time I was like seventh grade, and it was just I was like, I'm gay, and I need, you know, it was like, <laughs> stu- it's stupid, you know. But one time I had a, a, a really, I thought like a pretty funny call, and it actually worked out well. Cypress Hill was a guest, mm. and you know that's a big deal because uh, to me, their debut self titled album is one of the greatest albums ever made. You know, and I was so. Such a big fan, and I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? But they're all about smoking weed, right? Yeah, no, yes, they yeah, are. Now, so people, it was Bobo and Be Real, I bet. It was, it was because Bobo be, used to come in. And I think those... may, it might have been Send Dog, too. Yeah, but yeah, way, three used to come in. Yeah. And, and you know, you gotta understand, this is 1992, 93. Mm, so, if Adam was there, was Adam there? I think so. Adam yeah. didn't start till 96. Then, so maybe 97, 98. It could have been so Temple you're, of you're, Boomera. It could have been Temple of Boomera. You, you, I, you were uh, quite a bit older than you were giving yourself. No, 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 no. Because no. I, I, do, I was, I was definitely in high school. Okay, I would, I know that because I, I was like listening. I was like, I'm gonna call and I'm gonna <laughs> screw with these guys. So they're the guests, and they're all about smoking weed, right? And openly, and you gotta remember, like it's different. This is it, getting on the air in any broad. You could be on Good Morning America now and be like, marijuana is great. People are like, oh, whatever. Yeah. This was a big deal. That they're like, you know, we smoke all day. They would be blazing as they walk in the studios. So I'm like, okay, think weed, funny. Calm. So I called up and I said, I have a real uh, Dr. Drew. I have a problem. Hey, Cypress Hill, I, I I love you guys. And uh, 
I, I'm, I'm smoking so much weed that um, I've grown boobs. Oh. And so so you get, and you're like, this very common, got yeah. a comasty, can develop from the estrogen mm -hmm. imbalance. And I go, but the, the real issue is like, I'm starting to lactate. Yeah. Okay. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, there's milk coming out of my titties and mm -hmm. I'm a guy. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's very embarrassing. And Drew goes, well, you understand that's biologically impossible. Like this. You no, know, that's not what I said. I said you could be a tumor. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you, I think you sensed that it was Bullshit. a prank, yeah. right? And you kept, you kept taking it towards somehow suckling or like, something. And then yeah. I'm like, yeah. should I offer women yeah, to suck right, my, some to, weird. To suck my. So, <laughs> and Drew's going down the line of like, okay, all right, get like, next. And be real is like, yeah, nah, nah. I had a homie. The same thing, man. I'm telling you, you could do it. And I'm like, see, oh, this is great. So I could like manipulate it to go on a little bit longer. And I got a chance to have be real jump in and be like, oh, he has a, a milky titty homie. So for the record, guys, yes. asked you can develop, particularly around early adolescence with smoking a lot of weed. And uh, but the milk production, you got to first get a mammogram, make sure it's not a tumor. But it's not milk. Hang on, hang on. it's milk. It's like colostrum it's and everything. Galacteria. Well, I don't know about the colostrum, but but it's it's galacteria, and and the most common reason is tumors in the pituitary, prolactin screening tumors. But wait a second. Or medication. A male or thyroid problem. A male breast making liquid. I understand. There's a pituitary yeah. whatever, but it's not milk. It's the same thing that a female produces. Impossible. How is that possible? You have all the same shit there. It's just not under the influence of no, estrogen. No, we don't. Yes, you do. It just sits behind the nipple. Is inert. Does all the just like women have prostate tissue. Do you know that? I didn't the, know that. The skein's glands, Bartholin glands, that's, if you look at it in a microscope, it's identical to prostate. But then how come they don't deal with... Prostate cancer? Yeah. Because my, I, I've often wondered that, if there have ever been reported. I think it's the long-term estrogen exposure. Maybe with the transgenders, we'll start to see it. I thought the mammary glands and things were set up much like the reproductive organs in the, oh, down no, there. Oh, no, it's different. Like, it would it's be... Different. It's a whole different setup. It's a different setup, but, but it's... All these things are vestigial of something else. You know what I mean? Your testes are the ovary. You know, this it's a, it's an offshoot. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. fair enough. So it's all kind of goes together. But I mean, you know, why do men have nipples at all? I uh, I mean, you could tweak them. <laughs> you know, it's like to fuck with your buddies. That's yeah, why you do. Ah, like, <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Or for or pleasure. Like sick a sick titty twister, <laughs> and also just like, yeah, like every once in a while, who knows? You know, you could be laying pipe or. I know, back in receiving fellatio, and you're like, oh. Bert seems to like that too, doesn't he? It seems like his hands gravitate up there. No, no, is that, am I wrong? That what? Bert seems to like Bert's that. Bert's a big fan of his nipples. He yeah, he seems like he's. I don't, I don't see him tweaking his nipples. Nah, a lot. His hands kind of. No, I, it's not. It's not a tweak. I see his you're hands right. go. I don't see, but I've I mean, seen. You see his nipples a lot. Yeah, his shirts. <laughs> no, no, no. But I've seen the machine <laughs> you know? on stage, especially. Do, do like a one of these. Like, yeah, like yeah. A, there's oh, a lot of like, sort of hands hey, going towards he, the nipples thing. Yeah, yeah, look at this. I must yeah. have not seen that. Part. Yeah, look at my yeah, beautiful yeah. paw. Not the way Mike would, but but the way Bert would. Right, he's not cupping his tits while he's on stage. Do we have a release date for that movie? Does anybody You'd know have to anything? ask him. Oh, I'm so <laughs> Two bears, one cup? I oh, know, the, the machine. Mm. I'm looking forward to that so much. I saw the trailer. Yeah. Did he, you see uh, it? He leaked it on, uh, on Rogan. It was so good. It was so funny. I, I'm so excited. I have a fundamental problem with Bert. So I refused. What's the problem? Long before Bert became Bert. No. Yeah. I used to go drive out to his house in the valley from Venice. It was not easy Why? for me to do this oh, because to he had a podcast and he was like, I'm really trying to break in. And this was before he could just piss his way into his <laughs> Rolodex and have an A-list celebrity come by. Right, right. And that Tom and Christina just made his life a... a right, he a, takes a, his a shirt off. Manna and from heaven. Takes and his I shirt off and fills the Red Rocks. And I would spend hours there. He would have really beautiful conversations. And 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 he would always thank me so sincerely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mike. This really means... Thank you, dude. Yeah. Oh, do you think... I miss that show. And I go, yeah, dude, no problem. I like you, Bert. You've always been great. And... Never return my fucking phone calls anymore. Oh. oh, you're big time now, you fat pile of shit. <laughs> you can't return my phone call you guys, from your Rolls Royce, you, you guys fuck. Need, you guys need to help. We need some help here, clearly. But there is an important conversation to be had here. So if, there's if, a, wait, hold on. Caveat. Yeah. There also could be another important conversation to have here. Yeah. Maybe you got a different phone number. <laughs> Maybe he I mean, changed. Sure. I had the same, I had the same thing sure. with Steve-O. And I was like, oh, I uh, just... Had the wrong number. Steve would. Oh yeah, yeah Steve Bert would. has changed his number a few times over the last couple of years that I've worked with him. All right, so all that stuff I said for like <laughs> the last thirty-five seconds, I take it back. Cut that out. Cut it out. 
But so people that may not know, Mike is a long-term recovering person. 20 years, right? 20 years, yeah. yeah I celebrated 20 years. Um, That's a big one, right? That about wild? a month ago. What does that feel like? It was... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it felt... Uh, obviously, there's a sense of achievement. Mm. Um, but Didn't you tell me you felt a little... It, but uh, yeah. there was also a big... There was a, an emotional fallout. Yeah. There was a, 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 a problem there. Yeah. There was, a, there was a... Did you sort it out? I think I've attempted to handle it in the most responsible way but Which i was say, not using <laughs> well, well that that's a given but um kind of i want i don't want to say i'm redoing my steps but i i'm going down that path oh, of that's like cool. just kind of smart essentially emotionally i'm starting from the beginning smart you know where i was so panicked and i was so anxiety um riddled you know in these first six months of uh, back to your 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That I said, well, if that's, if I had to go this hard in the paint with my kind of emotional inventory and, and my, and my honesty with myself, that was a big one. It was that because, uh, I, 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 I am a, a responsible citizen mm. day in and day out. And I, I don't ever raise my voice at my family. And I like to, my, my, my ideal form of fun is, like having a tea party with my daughter, you know, I, I, and because I haven't been using or drinking for 20 years, it's very easy for me to, to, to genuinely convince myself, like I'm doing everything I need to do. Right. And I avoid being genuinely honest with myself about a lot of, uh, a lot of you've, collections you've of things. You've done a lot like, of work though, in addition to recovery, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's not like you're just, you know, Hey, I'm just not using. But it's a really cool idea. You know, everyone says you have to redo your steps. Yeah. I mean, and this is only your second time through. <laughs> Really? Mm, this is my second time through where I'm oh. really like I'm yeah. uh, like I can honestly tell you I'm applying myself because hey, I is I, you working with a sponsor out here in Austin or is somebody back? I I I, I had the uh, it was a weird thing I had the courage and then I, I think at 20 years in the humility yeah to go and then reach Ask. out and find a good a, a sponsor out here which was which was I think a, a bigger step also into kind yeah. of getting back to the fundamentals of what I need to do outside of just not drinking and using, yeah. you know? So the one thing, it just, uh, we, you and I spoke about this a little bit before, but the one thing that troubled me was how you beat yourself up for your the behavior while ill, which is sort of like, huh, yeah. you know, that's like, yeah, I understand that you have feelings about it, but my goodness. Well, okay. I, I hear you. And, yeah. and of course, like attaching yourself to something that happened, whether it's yesterday or 20 years ago, isn't going to serve you anything because uh, you know, mm, you're talking around it when you say shit like that. But, but you, let me let me finish. Right. You know, but right. so there's no there's no upside really to into, having those feelings. Into and the, yeah, because it's over. It happened. Yeah. I yeah. did it, and yeah. I and I've made amends to people that I may have yeah. harmed. Mm. So I need. But the 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 real rub for me was that you know I'm not I'm not naturally gifted and i'm not like someone who's overwhelmingly good at a lot of things and so i really really uh value the idea that i can wake up and go to sleep every day and be like well i'm not a piece of shit i'm mm. not a, i'm a i'm a responsible person i i think by and large when people meet me and i deal with people in my daily life they they like me and i and i I'm a, i give back to the world in a happy way so when i think like i i do that and i can rest in that I also then will have these moments where I'm like, oh, I'm a lying, cheating sack of shit scumbag that would would sell out anyone to get a little piece of crack, you know? And and I, I'm like, I, I was... And instead of going, well, that's not who I am. That was me and my disease. And that was 20 years ago. And, and now that you think that's unusual for the for No, that illness? no, 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 <laughs> by no means. Yeah. Um, so, but it's still that that's the thing that that lives in me. It's like yeah. that 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 somehow was, you got that wasn't a character I was yeah. portraying on a on a, a TV series. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, I was that guy, and it and uh, that still will chip away at me. You know, so but well, you you gotta may, maybe the amends haven't been adequate or something, or I, I don't know. So, I, I I bet you you're right because my amends, I'm very lucky. I'm by <laughs> by the grace of God, my amends aren't that extensive because i was a very isolated mm. user and mm. drinker uh i i never was violent i was not i'm just not that guy i was never like the guy who started bar fights or like yeah. fights with my friends or and i wasn't except on a train in france 
No, no, no. That that was legitimately not my shit. Okay, okay. That, those guys decided they wanted to beat the shit okay, out of me. Okay. Some French punk, some French <laughs> funk band named Boogia. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah. And they were they were they saw this is, again. This is kids. A longer story. This is kids. Back in the day, we used to listen to music. You'd actually have the CDs with you right. when, when you. <laughs> so I'm on a train in France, and they could see my CDs, and they were interested. They were like the liked my music. And they started talking to me. And next thing you know, one of them just throws a drink, a glass drink in my head. And it didn't break. It just bounced off. I was like, ah, fuck. And uh, so then I, I, I a knee-jerk reaction, like, l- lunged out at him. And then he started beating me up on a train. Like, it was like a Jason Statham movie. I'm fighting, like, four people on a train. Oh, weird. I know. I know. It was very weird. Was it just them being punk? They thought this is cool? Sort of a I think there's Fletch, a, there's Fletcher a, moment? There's a couple things. I think they were hammered. I was definitely fucked up. Mm. And... I speak zero French. So maybe it was a miscommunication. And so there was one guy who kind of spoke English, and I, I think maybe, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. One of the exciting things about a new year is you have no idea what adventures are in store for you. New travel, new jobs, picking up new skills. No better way to prepare for 2023 by, than by learning a new language with Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. And thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you can feel confident no matter where this new year takes you. I love Babbel. I've been an early adopter. Susan's going to learn some French this year because we're going to go back to France. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. So you can start having real life conversations with a new language in as little as three weeks. That's what I said, three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Their teaching method is scientifically proven to be effective. And with Babbel, you can choose from over 14 different languages. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. There are many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash drew. That is babbel.com slash drew for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. It is time to start the new year off right with our friends at Stamps.com. Be more efficient, save money, print your own postage right from your home or office within minutes of signing up. Never stress about finding the fastest or cheapest solutions. Stamps.com does it all for you automatically. That's right, Stamps. Dot com has amazing partnerships with USPS and UPS from beatable rates up to 86% off. Stamps.com automatically tells you what your cheapest and fastest shipping options are. No guessing, no overpaying, no thinking even required. We were early adopters in this household. It's a one-stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs. And for more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Why not yours? Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need to run your business right any time, any time of the day, right from your computer. No lines, no traffic, no waiting in the post office. Stress-free solution for every small business. Use stamps.com, as I said, to print the postage wherever you need it. All you need is your own comp- computer and your printer. They'll even send you a free scale, so you'll have everything you need to get started. You know exactly what this, the price should be for the particular package you're sending. And if you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Start this new year off by saving serious money on mailing and shipping. Get started with stamps.com today. Sign up at stamps.com slash Dr. Drew for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a free digital scale with no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com slash Dr. Drew. And thank you to stamps.com for supporting this show. So the reason I bring the whole topic up yeah. though, is, you know, Bert, you know him well. I'm sure he's talked about recovery with you. What do we do with young Bert and his- Here's uh, my thing with Bert. Because he, he, go ahead. Because def- we need to define what it is we're seeing there too. I am always very wary. You don't have to deal with this because you're just a man of science who understands the disease of addiction, yeah. right? From an, as an outsider's point yeah, of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, as a, as a drug addict, as an alcoholic, a, a desperate one, I've now stopped drinking. The last, I hate when people start then going around telling other adults mm. how they should do mm-hmm. that, do the same thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's it's very similar to 
I have no, in fact, I, I actually have high regard and respect as someone who's not particularly religious. I have very sincere respect for religions, but I don't like someone who was a pile of shit for 25 years and then discovers Christ, right. then goes around proselytizing, proselytizing yeah. to everyone. You know, so I feel the same way about sobriety. Yeah. No, no book thumping. I like that. In that, in that regard, I always am very wary of being, telling a grown adult like what so, to do. So let me but, just say, let me just say, I, I feel exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. People somehow think because you help people who are out of control who want help, you somehow want to bum everyone's experience. I do not. I don't. I, the idea that governments or doctors, anybody tell doc, people what to do with their lives yeah. or their relationship, with, that's ridiculous to me. But there's a, there's a middle zone. Now, I don't know if you're going to address this or not, but the middle zone is I got a friend who's drinking a lot. He may get into trouble. Huh. What do I do here? Do I how, how how firm do I get? I'm pretty confident, and I uh, to to be serious for a moment and not talk shit about Bert's fat ass. <laughs> uh, um, I'm pretty confident um, that Bert is not a guy who is going to get himself into any type of trouble through alcohol. And, and 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 party. The, what the, I do the, the consequence. He's not going to have consequences. Like Bert is not a guy who's going to get behind the wheel. He's right. not doing it. He's not going to come home and and smack his daughters. I agree. You know, he he's. I I said Bert to me is like the comedy Lemmy. Right. Like so you've never there. Show me. Show me the video of Bert slurring his words on stage. Yeah. Falling off. Stage. It doesn't exist. And the guys drink it. But he, you know, like Lemmy's the same way. Lemmy wake up to fucking meth and Jack. Yes. And, and there's, you never saw him miss a lyric or miss a and, note. And, but those guys, so again, you're, what you're talking about are the consequences of drug using and alcohol, which is really what defines the illness. But one of those consequences is health. That and, was my and, other yeah. concern. And so I, there's a friend I worry, I think, how long are we going to take this before we, but, or we, you know, and is he going to cross some line and not come back? If you remember our buddy Jason Waller, right? Yeah. Jason Waller, when I first saw him, had he was 24, had advanced alcoholic liver disease. I was, I told him, like, dude, this is shocking, shocking. And he, there he is. Thank God it, uh, he fully recovered. He's just, you know, his inspiration now. They're, in, they're I, in Nashville now, by the way. Do you know that? Nashville? Yeah. It's good, good living out there, man. Yeah, I, I do worry, but then, okay, then I have the conversation. You bring up a good point. I was yeah. going to say, obviously, there's a health concern. Yeah, if you care about that person. Yeah, you know. but then again, like, what about then? What do you say to overweight people? Isn't it's the it same? I have, I have these struggles all the time with lots of things. The, yeah. the, this goes through my mind a lot. But, but people turn to me when it comes to alcohol. They turn to me around Bert. You know, Tom will come to me like, oh, we need to worry about Bert. Like, mm, yeah, but okay, um, but then okay, Bert. He, Bert's, Bert's not a dumb guy. So, so Bert, Do, no, don't right. you think? Like, Bert don't, knows. We all have buddies who, for you, just can't wrap your head around, but they still smoke. Yeah. I, there's not a smoker alive. Just like I, I always really push back against people who are saying like, you just got to be more hard. You got to be more uh, hardline with people who struggle with their weight. I was like, dude, there's no, not one no, overweight no, no, person no. in the world who doesn't know they're overweight. That's right. And they don't know. Everyone knows it's not the ideal thing to do for their health. Yeah. But so. You don't have to remind them. Yeah. And I, I feel like, I don't think Bert is is going to be surprised to know that drinking uh, the, excessively the, the, is The is hard part with Bert is he's built his career and brand around this. That's where it really gets challenging. Because it, it must, he, listen, I used to have this challenge when I used to think about our friend Doug, Doug Brignoli, yeah. who now recently just died. And I think he tweeted, I'm going to take the vaccine if I die. You know, I, I I choose to do this, but if I die, well, you know that you know the choice wasn't a that good was a one. Rough, that's a yeah. rough one to get around. Yeah. So, um, okay, uh, but then, and we are seeing a lot of the stuff that he had. But, but then, why doesn't Bert? Then why doesn't Bert talk to Steve-O? Why doesn't Bert? But, but let me finish. The, uh, yes, yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. It's a good idea. I like I, that. If anyone in the world had the worry of, well, I'm not going to still have a career if I yes, stop using and it, drinking. It was it steve Fucking steve -o, Yes, you know? that's a great point. I'm, all right, that's a good, great strategy. I'm going to use that. Yeah. I, um, what was the other thing I was thinking about with, uh, who else were we talking about just a second ago? God damn it. Uh, uh, David Waller? Jason Waller. <laughs> Jason Waller. Oh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. David it's, Arquette. No, I lost my train of thought. David Data. Uh, it, it's, David uh, Guetta. The, the point, though, Daniel is that... West. Oh, we're back to Kanye again. So it's just the fact that people, when people build their careers around substances and around these behaviors, it, it's tough. It's tough to tell them what to do. I get it. It is tough to and tell it, them what at to least, do. At but... least he's not, he's the one thing he's given up on was this bullshit about flying and I have anxiety and I have to do it for the flying. But yeah. he's given that up, right, Nadav? Any? Has he, has he gotten rid of that? You heard him say that shit anymore? 
Well, what? He used to say that he had to drink because he had anxiety when he flew right. flying. Is that, he, he's dropped that, right? He's not uh, trying to. He's trying. Like to. I don't know if he's back on it, but like I know that that was that's always been his big. Yeah, but he, but he told last time I talked about it, he was like, okay, I'm I'm over it now. I'm not having the anxiety of flying. I can do it now. So good. So there's that's one less motivation. Yeah, every October he's definitely able to do it. Right, right, right. I mm. think he said that he was doing. Uh, he was allowing himself one for takeoff, one for landing. <laughs> I, I thought deal, that it was something like the that. The deal making is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but I think what he was saying that was generally on on a flight he just fucking pounds he used to oh yeah he used used to really nail it so he was saying kind of one just because it is for the anxiety it is it is an excellent place to get drunk no i know i mean if you're if we're gonna be honest though if that's airport slash flight is top tier (laughs) like you're just sitting you're like miserable you gotta deal you gotta watch some movie you probably don't want to you know it's like nice you just get him but okay getting back to the more serious stuff yeah when you attach your career to the idea of inebriating substances. Yeah. I am I'm no longer going to allow that to be a valid excuse. Especially after because 70s and then certainly 90s, you got to see it pretty goddamn clearly. Like it's not fun. I mean I, I remember talking uh, a man I I really really respect. I'm looking at the Sex Pistols uh, poster on the wall. That's uh, Christina's uh, studios across the way here. Um Jonesy from from the Sex Pistols, yep. okay? Now, he's gone on to have a really nice career in radio, too. He would talk to you about... And it, by the way, man's a recovering addict. Yeah. And here's another. He did not start using heroin until after he was out of the Sex Pistols. Good and I was him. like, that's... <laughs> wow. wow. Well done. Yeah. It's like David Lynch, the movie director. He started smoking when he was like 35. Jeez. He's like, I think I'll take this up now. <laughs> this sounds interesting. Oh, like, Who does that? Anyway. <laughs> So Jones would talk about it. He's like, everyone talks about it's so cool. It's so it's so rebellious. It's so right. He's like, it's it's gross. He's like, Sid Vicious, Sid was my friend. And behind the cameras, he was a beautiful, creative person with tons of potential. And he's fucking dead. Yeah. It's not cool. Yeah. It's gross. It's yeah. disgusting. And um, now I think that it's a perfect time to kind of spread that message because like, it's not so much today, but maybe two or three years ago, these SoundCloud rappers, all these Lil This, Lil That, they're t- they're making their songs about Percocet and Zanny bars mm-hmm. and this and that, and they're fucking dead, mm-hmm. and they're twenty. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, this yeah. is not. There's nothing romantic about it. Yeah, and, and, I, and I now do, they've woven fentanyl into everything, so people are inadvertently yes. dropping dead. So look, I I do think that there is, especially in this country. Uh, uh, years ago, not so much anymore. We've got. I think we've advanced ourselves a lot in as Americans, but still, a lot of Western Europeans are still stuck in this romantic idea of like. Well, they know they've romantic. They they have have self definitions around these behaviors. Like that's Joe. He's the. Guy. I remember I was in Italy once, and the waiter was wasted. He kept dropping stuff, and the other waiter's like, ah, "That's Joe. He's the guy that drinks. Isn't he something? He's poor. my friend. <laughs> he he, he drank a little. Drink. He, he liked the wine for breakfast. <laughs> he come party at lunch. Eh? See, I want to go back and um, finish the the my thought on Doug Brignoli. That was the thought I was having. Look, Doug Brignoli, B R I G N O L E. The guy was a bodybuilder. F- I, I remember when he, when he was 14, right? He, mm-hmm. he, were, he and I were working at Bill Pearl's gym back in those days. I was probably 20 or something. The Pasadena Prince. Yeah, yeah. And there's Doug, and there that's that's him a while ago. More recently, the, I think that's in the middle there. It's more recent. Um, and he um, I used to, he used to kind of approach me to give him this and that. I never did it, thank God. I was like, dude, I, I can't do that. And uh, he used a lot of shit, right, back in the day? Back in the day, sure. Okay. And then he got off it for a while, and then most recently he was preparing for some sort of contest again at the age of whatever he is, 59 or whatever, and uh, and dropped dead. Now, uh, let's assume, let's just say for the sake of argument, that it was the steroids that accelerated coronary disease and he had a heart attack. Sure. And it happens. You and I both know a lot of the guys that were big shots in the 70s and 80s that, that don't exist. Yeah, and, and, and here's the thing. Uh, a lot of people... From from an outsider's point of view, look at the bodybuilding world mm. because there is so much steroid use. And so you were much. you were there. Yeah, I used a lot, and I was a competitive in bodybuilding and stuff. And it's it's what I wanted to say was there are bodybuilders who die from steroid use. Like literally, their co- their cocktail will acutely kill them yes. at thirty seven. Then there are people who may have had pre existing coronary things or respiratory, and just the 
the cumulative effect. It, it, it puts a stress more, on the yeah. endothelium. Yeah. And if you think of, remember Lyle Alzado, he was convinced that it also fucked up the immune system and he ended up with a CNS lymphoma. And he was convinced it was from steroids. God. So anyway, so, so. That's ugly. Yeah, Oof. yeah. So the point being, back in the day, he would approach me and I would think to myself, my God, this entire, this dude's life was made. Like I started thinking, what if you could take a steroid and you become Mozart, you know, you could have, or a fantastic musician yeah. or something, and your whole life is made by these chemicals that somebody gives you. Is it worth it? You know, and yes. I, well, For and mo- I, almost all people listening and watching, I'm going to tell you beyond a shadow. Look, but, but he's dead right now. He's now these okay. guys are dead. Yes. And so, but so she, next, next time you're talking to Bert or Tom or Christina, okay. Yeah. Say right now I have a drug and may, Accelerate your the fatality yeah. rate for you. It yeah. may. I, I'd say pr- let's let's for the sake of argument, let's say pretty solidly will. But but you could live to be good. S- in your seventies. Yep. You could. You could. But it, I Bill guarantee Pearl's you, still alive, isn't he? I get, Schwarzenegger's fine. Yeah, Schwarzenegger's Dory fine. Yates is fine. Yep. yep. Okay. Is Columbo still around? But uh, no, Franco passed away mm-hmm. earlier this year. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but it was I believe unrelated. It mm-hmm. was something mm-hmm. yeah. anyway. But this pill or this injectable Thing, yeah. will make you George Carlin and and Eddie Murphy in their prime. Mm-hmm. You'll you you're you'll you be there for as long as you're murder on the, yeah. yeah forever. You're as writing long as you're on the and medicine. your performance. It, it, as soon as you take this, makes yeah. you. I I have to think that they would think you know very yeah. good. I, I have to you know. There's plenty of people like if you if you were to compare it to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm thinking of like Jonas Salker, I, who someone in the medical community who forever will be remembered because yeah. of their okay, say okay. Salker, in general. Okay. Um, Louis Pasteur. Yeah, okay. yeah. I can give you a drug, and that you, Doctor Drew Pinsky, will go down sure. f- as long as the human race is around. Doctor Charcot. Doctor Pinsky will be remembered yeah. for their contribution. Yeah. You're telling me you don't seriously consider that? No, I, I, I've had this conversation with myself many times as it pertained to Doug. And and I always thought, how am I going to feel when if he does and when he does die related to this stuff? And again, we're going to say for the sake of argument, it was. And I'm mixed. Yeah. I, I, and I was mixed all the way along. And I'm sure glad, you know, I didn't realize he was 63. I thought he was like 59. So he's almost exactly my age. And I'm glad I'm not uh, facing now what he faced. I, I really am. Even even given the whole life he led, you know, I, I, I don't know. This there's sort of a bigger philosophical question here about people and needing to be maybe Yeah, you know. I think and I think that philosophical question I've had this philosophical question a lot, both personally and then with other people. Um I think that philosophical question changes greatly if you have children. Yes. Because I have a friend who's a uh, motorcycle professional mm-hmm. motorcycle racer. Mm-hmm. And he will go to certain races. In, uh, in islands in Europe and stuff where like like 30 percent of dudes will die I know yeah I know I know these things are super dangerous and uh, like yeah. Isle of Man and stuff yeah. and um he doesn't have kids and he said to me he's like this is what makes me want to be alive right and I go well then fuck have yeah. At it. yeah you fuck yes yes I also have a friend who's a a, a, a pretty um ambitious rock climber same I was thinking about rock climbing and he same has, thing he has four children mm. and he's a good guy he was a great guy but he and he's he said, Oof. "Like, like, when in in two thousand one, when I was twenty or whatever, yeah. is like, I'll go anywhere and I'll yeah. try anything because yeah. that was what made my blood pump." Yeah, yeah. But you gotta, you gotta have different thoughts, right? Yep. So here's the deal: I want to do a little voice message and emails and see some videos and stuff, and then we're going to get. A, um, is Rudy around? Is he came in with you? Didn't he? Yeah. yeah we might get him in here. We'll I, I actually. No, no, no. We'll do some calls and stuff first. Okay. No, don't right. don't you go anywhere. You stay right. You know, here. I had like seven gallons of water. I, I know you're gonna need to take a shit or whatever. Right. I don't know or pee. But let's let's do some vo- voice messages. What I we would like here? to drop a deuce in the I, YMH studio. Well, like, I feel like there's. Like, well, I, we give you honor. permission to do that. There's yeah. a there's a bathroom with a squatty potty. Oh, I noticed. I just I, I when I first saw that squatty potty, I thought, oh, Bert's here. So yeah. it's Why also because in his house, in his, there's squatty potties all over the place. First Everyone's time I ever got a squatty potty. Who does? Everyone. First time I ever saw one was at Bert's house, right. and and Leanne was not using it. Okay, <laughs> wait, which one of you, by the way, uh huh, without a squatty potty, just squats on the toilet seat? Oh, that's because I know it was that's, one of you that's fucks. Any, it's any, that's dude. <laughs> do you have you changed that, or you just no, no. no. that's his thing. <laughs> He's he maybe a little more frequently. 
And and by the way, and and by the way, he has educated me that I thought a fucking asteroid had landed in the studio when I heard him talk about it the first time. I last Apparently, time, I, last time un- I was on the show, I told him I said if I ever see you doing that, I'm gonna shoot you with a gun. <laughs> but evidently, not that uncommon around the world. Oh no no no, we a, we had this conversation. Yeah yeah. Uh, as someone who grew up in Shanghai, yes, West, um, it was not uncommon in grammar school and everything yeah. because uh, at my grammar school and my junior high they didn't have stall doors yeah i don't know what the why mm. but i would always go see these chinese kids uh squatting on the toilet on the side on the, on, rim. On the scene on the rim yeah yeah good times man see any any early early, early adopter leader, yeah, i mean listen Call I, a there's no it's probably better better for you because i i mean i do have like I, I think like actual damage from sitting on the toilet too long. <laughs> you can do that's right. I, you, you everyone has their legs fall asleep, right? Everyone yeah. has a not this everyone, but di- yes, it happens. Sitting on the toilet too long, like I I'm like limping. I'm like ah. Well, not only that, it can it can hemorrhoids and can mess with the the anal. How function, have I but, never had hemorrhoids? Uh, you're a specimen. We've established that. How, but, how have you ever had a cavity? How do you? <laughs> <laughs> how did you not have a stroke? I smoke so much meth and crack. I like actually, so much. I actually have a bathroom related question. Oh, imagine oh, that. Sick. Because I've always heard people being constipated, but I've never been constipated as far as I know. Remember when you had the diverticular abscess? Mm-hmm. Didn't you have constipation then, or no. at least in the operation afterwards? No, I shot. I shot quite a lot during hmm. that. Do you, um, do you let out? Do you, Fibrous foods pretty regularly? Uh, sometimes, yeah. But 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 my, my question is, because recently I had an episode and I wasn't sure if it was I was constipated or just I had a shit that was too big to shit out. Let me examine this, this, the area. Let's go. <laughs> With my it? cock. Uh, Not so much. Uh, you can. Yes, things can get dry <laughs> and impacted up there and it can be hard to get it through. Yep. That's constipation. That is constipation? That's a, that's a version of constipation. There's oh, different, different manifestations. Then I was constipated get some for the first Vicodin. time two weeks. Maybe that's what he was you doing. Want, you want to experience? Con- you want to experience? Uh... <laughs> See? <laughs> do you ever, anyone in your um, sort of esque, in your uh, travels, do you ever get so so big and and impacted and, and hard that you can't get it through, or you're you're pretty much ninja with that? Uh, you said, is there ever a time? Sorry, I was still thinking about this high five. Um, <laughs> when it gets so so, the, the the amount of stool can get large and hard and get, be difficult to push through. Uh, um. Oh, you're asking me if that's ever happened? Yeah. I, that happened frequently. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what but, do you mean? Well, you're such a ninja. Yeah, you're such after? a ninja. I assumed you just pushed it right through no matter what. All you got to do, call Susan yeah, yeah. Pinsky when it comes to large, hard things being hard to push through. Oh, my God. Because believe me, <laughs> night after night, Susan Pinsky is dealing with large, hard meat that just can't pass, won't break the barrier. And she's like, Jesus, Drew, three times today? And he's like, Ugh! Listen, bitch. I work hard. He's got a stethoscope on. He has one of those old, like, circular... Headlamps. Mi- yeah, mirror things on his head like a doctor at Three Stooges. And he's laying pipe. Never, and Susan, uh, Susan's walking like she's horseback riding never, for the rest uh, of the week. Never constipated. So, no, anyway, no. Let's get a Drew's, voicemail here. Drew's augering out that back door like it's here. like the Roto-Rooter. Here we go. Hey there, Dr. Drew. I was just calling because uh, I recently started taking Prozac. It's been doing great. My anxiety is... Down. I don't want to, you know, it's been helpful, but um, I, can, I can maintain an erection, but I can't um, not, I can't make gravy. It's been about 30 days on it. Gravy. I've yet to not, in about 30 days. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything I can do to, like, supplement or help on that end. I really want to come off the Prozac. It's kind of been working pretty well. Yeah. But, yeah, I also would like to make gravy. Thank you. <laughs> Who doesn't? First That's question, a, why does his voice sound like that? He's drunk, I, I, right? You know, I don't know. I don't he, know. It could be, I was thinking the same thing. He has a very unique voice. It could be like like Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, I, I'm into voices. I always have, like, analyze them because people mm. have weird things in them. Mm. Um, Vin That's Diesel. That's something I didn't know about you. I thought I knew everything about you. You That's know a, I love to do no. impersonations. Oh, yeah, I love and, you like, do impersonations. Like, and, and, and so I'm analyzing, like, the it. way people sound. Um, Vin Diesel doesn't just have a deep voice. James Earl Jones has a deep voice. Mm-hmm. Vin Diesel has like it sounds like there's two voices, yeah. and that guy had the same. Like yeah. there's a, like a, almost like a Bane esque. Yeah, you know. So I, I don't know what's going on there. Sometimes there's you know no, nodes on the cord. There, okay, like I, I think this is. I'm glad that guy called. This is a super duper duper big and very come prevalent on, problem. Come because on. look, if you're struggling with mental health and you find a drug, if you're a guy, you find a drug that helps. And it helps you get through the day, but commonly there's sexual side effects. 
that's like the most important thing in the world besides yeah. your mental health. And so you're doing this. Yeah. So I, I have a whole interesting story about this phenomenon. So uh, back in the mid nineties, uh, I was seeing, I was working at a psychiatric hospital. I was seeing tons of patients who were having these sorts of side effects. And let's be clear, the SSRIs and the NSRIs, the, so the, the dual agents, as all, all those psychotropics that affect mood and anxiety, can cause decreased libido, difficulty orgasm, difficulty arousal, difficult with the detumescence that afterwards things don't go right. So it affects all phases of the sexual cycle. In the mid to later 90s, the drug companies were in abject denial of this. And I was furious. It was pissed me off so much. And on Loveline, we used to get calls where people were lives, relationships were being destroyed. destroyed. Sure. Because, you know, the guys would say, she doesn't love me anymore. She's not into me. She's not attracted to me. Or women, same thing, feels like she's not attractive. It has nothing to do with it. And no doctor ever said, hey, this is one of the things with this side effect. Right. I then accepted uh, a fee. It was like, $200,000, something like that, to go out on the road and do a lot of promotion for the company to make Wellbutrin, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Wellbutrin wanted me to do that because they, I, by the way, I would not work for Big Pharma today, but back in those days, doctors routinely did stuff for Big Pharma. And this was an opportunity for me to get out there and talk about this phenomenon. Don't take antidepressants, or if you do, talk to your doctor about these side effects. And Wellbutrin was interested because their medicine didn't have that side effect. I, so I take it. <clears throat> Pupropion. Right. right. And, and I, so, I, I nut like <clears throat> like a champ. So it was a non-branded campaign. I wasn't saying, hey, take Wellbutrin. Yeah. I was saying, be aware of this shit. It's a really serious thing. And I got crushed because the company, 20 years later, got sued by the government for their policy of using, recommending to doctors that they use their medications off-label. Okay? Wow. That has... Nothing to do with what I was doing. Nothing, right. nothing. I was proud of that campaign for 20 years. What happened was these fucking federal investigators found me on a radio show where I said, they said, well, what do you do if you get these side effects from the antidepressant? And I said, well, what do I do in my practice, which I'm entitled to tell anybody, even if there's an off-label component. Sure. I said, well, sometimes I add Wellbutrin. Many times I take them off the antidepressant and I switch them to Serazone, Wellbutrin, or Remeron because those don't have that side effect. Serazone's since been taken off the market. That was a really good medicine. Um, Why does a really good medicine get taken off the market? Liver inflammation uh, with some sometimes serious liver inflammation at the rate of like one per million. Com compare that now of the rate of uh, myocarditis from the vaccine, which yeah. is three per thousand. Hmm. One Damn. per million takes some off the market and three per thousand or, we don't worry about. Or huh, death. Yeah. Per, we don't know. We don't know. No, no, no. I'm, I was going to say, or hopeless life-crushing addiction from, yeah, from, from like being depressed. 80% for fucking opiates. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, right. You and know? people, doctors prescribe <laughs> that shit hand over fist. So our prescribing stuff is very nutty. Um, the point being, he can switch to these other things, Remeron or Wellbutrin. He can sometimes add Wellbutrin, but usually the side effects, particularly from Prozac, are so intense yeah. that you'd have to switch. You can switch to something else. Sometimes, uh, one of the reasons we use a lot of Lexapro these days, it doesn't have that side effect. So you can talk to your doctor about I, I, Lexapro. I, I'm being, uh, being genuine because I'm really yeah. sensitive to this man who called and then other yeah. people who are dealing with this because, like, <sighs> it's such a. It's such a like relief and it's such a liberating feeling when you do find if you're genuinely struggling and you find a medication that can help you yes, help relieve yes, those symptoms. Yes. Do you, don't you think that even though it's costing him the most oh, important like, absolutely. you'd be a little reluctant? Oh, to, if he came to me, let's say he I'm his yeah, doctor and he yeah. comes back and he goes, "Geez, I, you know, I, and I we don't really know what his antecedent symptoms were. Let's say it was sure. bad. He was disabled with anxiety, had trouble getting out of suicidal bed. Suicidal ideation. He, maybe yeah. suicidal ideation. And he comes back in and goes, "Hey man, I feel great." I'd be like, "Oh, this is fantastic." Yeah. But I can't make gravy to use his words. Yeah. And I'd be like, Hey, let's see if we can uh, kind of do okay with this for a while. Let's see how long this goes. And by the way, keep at it. Maybe you can find a way to kind of press through, find a way to have an orgasm some way. And we kind of work with your partner on this, but let's give it a few months before we back off of this thing. And by the way, you're supposed to try, supposed to is a relative term, but after six months, you're supposed to try to back people off their medications. Yeah. So anyway. I just, I just got off one. So. Yeah, you have about, if you have depression, you have about a 50% chance of recurrence. Like I had, I had major depression when I was 19. And so I figure, and I'm, I'm prone to it. I can still feel, I can, as I get older, I feel it more I'm like, oh shit, you know, that's going to come back. What a, ugh. And I'm, uh, this is not a Kanye question. I mean, mm -hmm. a Kanye statement. I'm, yeah. I'm being, but I'm being serious. Yeah. You think there's like a 
like the Jewish guilt thing. That that's causing me no, to with your and then all because all, all my male Jew friends are depressive. They they they're like where they're always teetering on that like yeah, yeah my my family's great my career's great but yeah. like oh fuck I, it feels the world's a, it's the world's a miserable it fucking feels nightmare. A, a, there's a, a little more genetic to that I think. Mm-hmm. I was traumatized as a kid too. Christina yeah. and I have talked about that a little bit. But more than that, there is a, oh, we suffer. It's not guilt. It's like you expect to, you're taught the, that the life, you expect yeah. to suffer. Yeah. If we suffer. If, if things are good, okay, just for now. But don't worry, you'll be suffering again soon. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of that in the Jewish culture. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I wonder, I do wonder though, it's so fascinating to me how much of it could just be genetic evolution yeah there could be some because like but again i have a you know shits of mom and not you know i don't know like how many nobel prize winners are sephardic or european jews it's like oh well that you know what i'm saying hungarian hungarian that's there's something about that genetics they're brilliant but and christine is that too i I saw it on her with her first stand-up i'm like oh there's that i bet she's a party i gotta talk to tom about that (laughs) i bet christine's a fucking party (laughs) When when Mike says shit like that, it yeah. actually scares me. Yeah, what do you mean by that, Mike? Oh. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. I, I, go think, ahead. I think that if you're one lucky Mr. Tom Segura, that there are that you know when the bedrooms door doors close and the kids go to sleep, it's a fucking paw tag. Shit. shit is on. Yeah, shit uh, is on. And now Mike taught me. <laughs> <laughs> That when a woman has a lisp, it has certain meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Drew. <laughs> I have Christina just, does not have a lisp. No, she doesn't. Okay. That doesn't mean she's not in this I understand. This it doesn't demo. preclude. doesn't preclude it. But when you what hear What I it, have found, and Drew... In your travels. And I use my, 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 my beaker, <laughs> a.k.a. my <laughs> cock, to prove this theory hmm? that girls who, have, <laughs> girls who have a lisp like anal... My cat's with everybody. They may not know it yet. Anybody? Any? Confirm that? Can you confirm? I mean, my girl has a list. <laughs> <laughs> and is that is that port open? Yeah. yeah! <laughs> Fuck! Yes! Fuck! You are the fucking... <laughs> oh! Oh, that was the way he said it too. It's oh. good. I like that. Oh, Eddie, thank you. You are the gift that keeps on there's giving, just, my there's friend. There's just some things that, oh. that that that. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh. I don't know what it is. There's some things that. Uh, that do you remember? Do you remember oh. how I could do that, Drew? What? With, like, by what? just hearing girls' voices on Love Line. Yes. How you do the? When were you? When were you? I could been, do the and like, I could do multi orgasmic. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, and I hit. I hit you. I'd hear a girl's voice. She's like, "Hi, guys. Thank." I'd hit you on the table. I was like, "Cheese." Flaming, flaming hot. Yeah. Oh, Listen yeah. I remember that. Like, you, you, you had the hot. You could tell the hot voice. That's right. And uh, yeah. and yeah. Uh, also, here's. Listen to me. Adam has a category now of uh, F H C because we we were at a bar one night, Susan and I, and this yeah. woman. I love you guys. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And uh, we, and we were like we were like tried to escape. It was like yeah. an hour of that difficulty. Sucks. And uh, and and we had dinner with Adam, and afterwards, and he goes, oh. Sound like somebody had a run-in with an FHC. And I was like, FHC? Formerly hot chick. Oh, <laughs> like, that's got to be, look, that's got to be a real thing. <laughs> Woo, boy. I was having the same conversation with my friend at Jiu-Jitsu yesterday. Uh, former college football player. Oh, yeah. High-level college football player. Yeah. Okay? And we were talking about how men who make it to the NFL or the NBA, yeah. that, you, of course, you don't excuse it. But oftentimes, they're detached assholes because they've been treated like rock stars yes, since yes. they were 12. And so later, there we have a term for that now, formerly former, med- you know, And it's got to be hard. Formerly yeah. professional athlete. Unless FTA. you're LeBron or, or Tom Brady, 10, 20 years after reco- retirement, no one cares anymore about you. You know, like it's got to be very crippling. Um, imagine being like a hot, like a flaming hot chick. And then that's not the case anymore. It's it'd be, got, it'd be it, confusing. It'd be, it'd be very, con- yeah, it'd, it'd be confusing. A seriously confusing. Yeah, I feel bad. I feel that that's true. Thank God, my friend Danny. I gotta get Danny. Then there, but here. then there's the chicks that you're like, well, what are we doing? Like the the Angela Bassett's, where you're like, well, it never stops. Right. You're just hot forever. Yes, like, yes. Or J Lo, who's hotter now than ever before. Right. right. It doesn't make any sense. I, I just good for everybody. It's no, all yeah, good. bravo. Yeah. I agree. Uh, okay, so uh, let's get another voice message in here. We we can't stop. Hi. 
My name is Anthony. I'm 28. Um, about a week ago, my girlfriend woke up to me seizing next to her in bed. Oh, Jesus. Um, I was taken to the ER, and ran a, they ran a bunch of tests. CT came back fine. Blood test came back fine. Um, everything came back fine. Um, I'm a relatively healthy individual. Work out three or four times a week. How old? Don't really Reason drink any us. like anything other than water and alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I smoke from time to time, but that's about it. Stay off anything else. Um, is this something that should be concerned about? Yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, man. yeah, man. I mean, obviously, you, you worry first thing you worry about tumor and things like that, and they rule that out. Thank goodness. But you, you need a seizure workup. You need an epilepsy workup. You may just have epilepsy, and that does happen. Uh, and uh, my bet is. I don't know if he's had head injuries or anything else, but my bet is he was exposed to something, weed, alcohol, something that probably he lowered his... He smokes a little bit. Yeah, and I, and I bet that lowered his seizure well, threshold. Well, weed, weed, weed is common, because uh, I struggled with this in the 90s. We mm. talked about this, man. Mm. And uh, doctors would always warn me that weed doesn't cause seizures, but it definitely lowers your threshold. Well, now yeah. with the heavy, heavy stuff, oh, maybe, we, we yeah. think it may cause it. Yeah, but, back but, in the day, I was smoking seeds and yeah. fucking <laughs> Mexi <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. Another one, what do you got? How about some, uh, let's do some emails. Emails. Okay, I got a good one here. I want to do some some videos too before we finish up here. Uh, good morning. My doctor told me vaping is bad for me and I should just smoke cigarettes. I can't fucking. Hell yeah, dude. I can't fucking believe a that. A doctor said that. I had Isn't a that dentist incredible? Tell me that. Oh my God. Yeah, I had a dentist tell you to smoke cigarettes. Well, she she told me that vaping was worse for my teeth than smoking was. Oh, well, that, that might I be don't, true. That might be true. Really? That's interesting. Glycerin and stuff. Like, I know I that if you smoke indoors, it like fucks up your windows or something. P.S. Hot sauce is listen, the best. T- listen, Look. tell your dentist. This is true. No, Doc Drew will deny this. Mm. Your teeth, just like your fucking hair, it's all genetic. Oh, yeah, that's true. You could smoke Not pure all of it. I mean, free base. <laughs> Like and Mike, you hit the genetic lottery with yeah. your teeth and your yeah, hair. Yeah. Like, I've never had a cavity. Yeah, that's what. I'm t- Thank you, sir. M- Mike smoked. Have you ever free based? Uh, no. M- <laughs> Mike smoked more crack than fucking anybody, and his maybe teeth- not Rick James, but like more than most people. More, more meth certainly. Than I've me. smoked more crack and meth than ninety nine point nine percent of people who have ever lived. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And not a cavity, not a anything. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Do you brush your teeth? Of course. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I'm, some people like, don't even bother. Um, and, yeah. I, and I chew tobacco. Oh yeah, all chew day. tobacco all day. Not, not a stain anywhere. And I drink nothing but coffee and water. Yeah. Mm. Hell yeah, dude. That's the genetic hand. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but uh, look, the vaping is in every study I've ever seen. Vaping is the number one most superior way to get people off cigarettes, in terms of lung cancer, heart disease, lung disease. Nothing worse than cigarettes. Tobacco is the enemy, not nicotine. I can't say this. You and I have talked about well, yeah, developing I've, nicotine products. I, they can I help. am shocked at how. Well, it's not, it's not shocking actually. I, I understand it, but people associate nicotine with cigarettes or chewing tobacco. And, and the truth is, the drug in isolation, nicotine, is actually healthful. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe it's at least not, at least not harmful. It's it's not at least not harmful. And yeah. from what they've shown, there is irrefutable cognitive benefits. Yep, yep. And maybe but there's a lot of stuff that we can we can go into, but it, it's it's. The point is, the tobacco is the problem, not the nicotine. And if you, vaping helps you get off cigarettes, it's an advantage. Now, should you keep vaping? We don't know. This shit in the vape, we worry about it. Is it better than not doing anything? No, of course, vaping, you'd rather do, you do nothing than, than vape or cigarettes. But if it's between cigarettes and vaping, in terms of heart, lung, cancer, definitely vaping better than cigarettes. I did not know about the, the teeth part. That's interesting. So... Um, Let's do a video real quick, and then uh, and then I think you were saying you have to take a pee or something. I, have to, I can. We're, make, we're, we're, you're gonna make. I'm gonna make bad stuff go. Okay. Oh, yeah. What do we got here? Got. Uh, you know what? I'd like to see. Two. Oh, here we go. Ahead. Oh, who's that? Go ahead. Curve models are accusing a local nightclub of ah. fat shaming them after they were denied entry because of their appearance. Huh. Eyewitness News reporter Rob Hayes spoke to the women about their experience and got a response from the nightclub. Not many oh. women can say they posed for the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. But Gabriella Halikis can. But being a big success well, she's hot. can often yeah. mean little when you're big. Discrimination and fat phobia go so, so deep in society. Halikis and her friend Alexa McCoy say last week they went to this Hollywood nightclub, the Highlight Room, and ran head on into a blatant case of fat shaming. So the promoter starts letting in the whole group of girls, and right when it gets to me at the front, the bouncer puts the rope in front, looks me up and down, and says, yeah, not tonight. 
And he looked at me and did the same thing up and down and was just like, not tonight. Next, like, yeah, you guys are good. Yeah, you guys are good. Like guys came in, girls came in, everyone. And we're just standing there like, is this really happening? But that's where they do that shit. Witness News reached out to the company that owns the highlight room. It tells us that the doorman in question has been removed from the door oh, and that the company does not tolerate discrimination. Oh, of any give kind. me a break. It adds that highlight room representatives had scheduled a meeting with Halikas and McCoy to address the issue, but that the women canceled. Now, look, every, uh, all the way back to Studio 54, they've done this. They used to just Listen, you, you, no, no, you, you, and, and they discriminate against people for lots of things, not just weight. To be here, fair, there's nothing the real, good about this. Here's but, the real issue yeah. with this. Those two girls, let's remove their size, were very pretty, yeah. very attractive. Yeah. They, it, this is actually kind of a dick move on their part. They are bitching and moaning about something that, the line share of females have probably had to deal with at least a couple times in their life every, everywhere N they not go. Not because of weight, just of just other appearance. Just because it's like, appearance generally. you know what? Yeah. These chicks come in. Yeah. You're not behind the Hey, yeah. you want to go backstage? You're yeah. at a concert with yep. your friends and, and, and fucking. That's my point. This you know, is, this like is. Travis Scott invites your, your hot friend, but you don't make the cut. It's, it's not good. It's not nice. It's not morally sound. But it's the way of life. Well, and these two girls, like it is. But we we need to like do better. You know, if we're gonna do better with this, with the with the weight, let's do better with the whole no, thing. No, no. You and I don't have to do shit differently. But if we open a nightclub, mm. like that's that's life. That's a privately owned business that they say the 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 attraction of our place is that we only allow a certain type of person in. Why is that different than, than a certain race? It's well, not. It's, it's it's absolutely different than it, it's thing. different, but it's it's, you know, it's you know what I mean? wildly different. No, 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 no. It's 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 discrimination. It's just discrimination it, based on something else. There, it's discrimination. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not a form of discrimination based on someone's race or religion, which makes it fucking yeah. way different. It, it, or it, or sexual proclivity. It, proclivity. It is based on some other genetic hand they got. Listen to me. You know? I'm just saying, it's, it's, we, we feel way worse about the race stuff, for let's, sure. Let's remove race for a second yeah. right now, okay? Uh, it, the person, whoever's listening, the, the man in this uh, example is your race. So this, this is race-free. Yeah. But this man has a ripped shirt, uh, tattered, dirty beard, mm -hmm. and um, perhaps uh, unkempt hair, and, and one of his shoes has his foot coming out the no, front of it. He's not coming in. And every restaurant he goes to in any town USA, the mm -hmm. manager's gonna come over and go, get the fuck out of here, please. Um, You may not know, that guy could be an MIT scientist. I, I agree, I would agree with that, but that is a, that is nothing to do with his genetic hand. That has to do with his propriety. And people, Maybe. Can, people do need to be held to certain but, but wait a second, but wait a yeah. second, but wait a second. It can also, it like, maybe there's, I've been in situations where I've seen with my own eyes, girls didn't get in, not because of how pretty or thin they were, because they didn't, they weren't, they weren't with the right crew. Yeah. They weren't yeah. cool. That's right. And listen, like, Q factor yeah. is a thing. Yeah. And I don't Terrible. think, like, if these girls had this happen at Applebee's or church. Yep. Then we'd be like, listen, we got to fucking talk. But it's a nightclub. Challenging. It's like it's like going to to a comedy club and mm. then complaining and, and and suing because you were offended. Mm. It's like, hey, don't come here. Then a trendy we, we, Hollywood. We live in a world. I thank God that has sort of slowed down. I agree. But that's where but we were going. But a trendy Hollywood nightclub yep. or a Manhattan high end nightclub, mm. Miami Beach. Don't go there without understanding there is a chance you might not get let in simply because you're you. Speaking of going there, go go take a shit. I'm gonna do some emails while you do your thing. A uh, younger brother with gambling addiction. My younger brother struggled with drug addiction in his early 20s, was even arrested for selling drugs at a music festival. He took a lot of ketamine, uh, awoke from the K-hole in police custody. He should have taken... <laughs> he wants to take more Benadryl. Mm -mm. Uh, he made it through probation and got a good job, but now he seems to have taken up two new vices, Adderall-fueled workaholism and gambling. So let's be clear, the Adderall is that's addiction again. Uh, and the workaholism and gambling is behavioral addiction. Gambling's all right. No. He often brags about pulling very long hours at work, usually while so jacked up on his prescri prescribed Adderall. It's still, no. Mm -mm. Uh, he reminds me of a fed smoker. No shit. He also spent the last year or so asking my parents for money to cover expenses. 
even though he makes good money because he's losing it all gambling. <laughs> they recently paid off a $5,000 credit card for him. It's clear that he's losing lots of money from gambling. Yep. Uh, obviously, we never give him money again, but what else can we do to protect ourselves from his craziness while pushing him towards getting help? Ta-ta there, our word. Refrain from using gendered language. James from Boston. So, uh, look, man, you and your family need to go to a program called Al-Anon. You're, you're not, everything you do in, try, in terms of managing him, it's not going to go right unless you have the support of either a therapist or an Al-Anon sponsor, somebody there in your corner because it's, it's a relational illness. You get sucked into it. Make no mistake, his addiction is alive and well and fully active. It sounds like he never really went to a program or anything because if he did, you should get him back to a sponsor in his home group. But he, he has a big problem here. and He may need to go to, to treatment for it. Holy Careful. moly. What's up, doc? Did you come here with Mike? I have to. Because, like, I'm still living here now because of Mira la, la Quarantine, you know? Like, yeah. So I was at his house. Like, I was just. I was so hold on, everybody. This is Rudy, everybody. Rudy Cisneros. What's he's up, an old doc? friend of mine. So an old doc? friend of mine in Catherwoods. And he's. Uh, I, I never thought I'd see you leave East Los, but uh, here you are. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. Like, my heart, Mira, like, in the cockles is like hurting in the tacos the cockles oh, dog. oh isn't sorry. that a part of your yes, fucking yes, corazon? yeah yeah it's hurting because like i, I want to be back with my friends and like the dodgers and oh yeah shit like that but you know like i got locked up in the quarantine with mike in yeah. fucking venice beach like 2020 and then i'll be honest with you i was partying I, the dodgers won the world series and i yeah. got fucked up oh i was smoking wet cigarette and shit and next thing i know i was in his garage fucking moving van just put me in there they're like they thought i was like some hipster fucking like a, like like a, a display a couch or some dis, shit dis, yeah because dis, i was all display like, for the me, me and I, like, rigor mortis from the pcp like this oh um, uh, what'd your and family they, do uh, without you around are you kidding me my wife's fucking over the moon happy oh. she's like go work live out there do something oh are you sending money back that is a, that's a, ah, that's the best shit you've ever said dog. <laughs> why am i sending money back Pinches suck Who, my dick, doc. I, and I'm, I listen. I got a new gig at Jamba Juice here. Uh, I haven't and seen the Jamba Juice here. It's good. It's Excellent. Yeah, but they call it Juice Land. Okay. But, so I told them I like I got experience and shit. It's pressed know? juices. And uh, there was like some hippie girl. She's like, oh, it's sweet. We can you can totally work here. Uh. It's great. And these vatos are nuts, doc. But so the the the, the, the Mexican American community is a little different here in Texas. It's then. different, doc. Yeah. Let me tell you. It's different. Yeah. Couple things. They eat pickles. Yeah. Mexicans in Los Angeles don't eat no pickles. Like maybe if you're in a pinch, you're right. You know, it's the only shit your grandma yeah. has in the fucking. Yeah. But like. But at least that'd be next to the the peppers and things. We too. pickle everything. Yeah. yeah. Pero we don't eat pickles. Yeah. Doc. <laughs> right. It's pickle true. Pickle cucumbers and yeah. fucking not a cucumber, carrots, stuff, carrots, carrots and, and cauliflower. But no cucumbers. No no no, no cucumbers. Stuff. So and then. No Raider jerseys. Uh, fucking Cowboys are everywhere. Oh, I don't no understand. Raiders ju- jersey. I don't even understand. No do- I, that's, well, like Dodgers. Seeing, that's like seeing a priest with no collar. I, it's a, a Mexican you with, with no the Raider. yellow and blue hat kind of freaks me out a little oh, bit damn, too. Dog, no, this one's good. This, uh, I got this one to keep me warm. Um, I, I, it was, it was. Let me tell you the story, dog. Okay. So the other night, I was getting lit, dog, because I had my friends. They came out to visit me, dog. My friend, fucking uh, Lufa, and uh, um, Bunyan, and that Vato toothpick. Wow. And the homie, the homie, that one from Duarte, you know that Vato grasshopper. No, that Vato Hector. Hector. But yeah, everyone calls him ceiling fan. That yeah, Vato that's sick, right. Dog. Ceiling fan. Yeah. And they were on a sick one. They just drove out here, and we were partying. And so they, you're lo- you're getting into drugs again, man. We got to be careful here. That's right. Yeah. No, I am. I'm I'm fully back. You're here. gonna get back. You're gonna end up back in the pen, but in Texas pen. I actually had some questions about that, like like medical questions. Okay. If you wanted okay. Me to like, okay. okay. <clears throat> I I got a, like my Mexican iPad right here. Oh, oh, good. Okay, good. I'm here to help. You know James Bond. I do know James Bond. He for sure has herpes, right? Probably. It's pretty common. I saw he was in like Marrakesh and then fucking Tripoli, just putting his dick in everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Herpes. Okay. Fonzie has herpes, right? That I don't know. For was sure. He, was he super active too? I had a dream the other night. Do you do dream analysis? Uh, okay. Sure. Try. It was raining. And the raindrops were my, my grandpa who's been dead. 
Each or, raindrop was your your grandpa. Millions of my grandpa. Or they were falling like they were your grandpa's tears. They were actually your millions no, of grandpas. Like, listen, that's the crazy part, dog. So my grandpa's teardrops are falling. And I'm like, damn, dog. And I look up and the it's tears coming out of the eyes of Fernando Valenzuela. Oh. And he's throwing baseballs, fool, but they're not baseballs. They're my grandma's chichis. Oh. And I wanted to fly up and eat them. And eat, the, so, eat your grandma's chichis. Yeah. My grandma had nice, nice titties. Uh had. She's 117 years old. Oh, right? I see, so I see. Okay. Saying, like, she just the fucking hit No, no, I just, I just worry that she may have passed away because we've been, had some concerns no, about her. my grandma's yeah. still doing good. good. You know, I call her. She got COVID like 11 times and shit, you know, and she's fine. I don't have any real, uh, I'd have to hear a lot more about this dream to say something meaningful, except to say it sounds like you miss your, your family while you're here in Texas. I do, dog. I miss my wife. And you miss the Dodgers. I mean, Fernando. I mean, I do miss the Dodgers. And dog. you miss being young, too. I mean, f that was back in the 80s. I do miss being young. You, it's no wonder they pay you the big bucks, dog. <laughs> hey, you're Jewish, right? Uh, sort of. Ish. Ish. Who hates you more, Kanye or Mel Gibson? Gibson. Serio. Right? right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're probably a fucking Jew. <laughs> That's how he sounded, dog. That's how he sounded. Yeah. And then he called his Haina. That one time he called the, the, his Haina, the Russian Haina. Her name was like Olga or some shit. And he's like, you're a fucking glum cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but let's be, be clear. Both Kanye and Mel Gibson have had, you know, there's apparently some mental illness on both sides. And so when they do these things, I, I have trouble holding them. It, it To me, my thing is like, hey, you're not taking proper treatment you're refusing to do care whatever and then like say you're an alcoholic and then you go kill somebody well now I, I can't help you anymore has your hair always been gray like your whole life 30s like bugs bunny huh Cl pretty bugs much bunny will always had gray hair he did but that Forever, was that huh? was gray i got silver when i was out in the desert they kept calling me silver what's your huevos like dark Serio? Yeah. Like your eyebrows? It's just yeah. fucking weird. It's damn, just on my head, huh? Do you, do you fucking clip that shit or you just let it go? No, I, I groom. Sick. Figure 50. Uh, what do you do? Do you do like, um, do you do like Osama bin Laden or like you do like, like, what's designs? Osama bin Laden? <laughs> like, we're just like, I look like that. Sometimes I do that. You know? What is that? We're like, I'll cut the top off, ah. but all the balls is coming oh. down. Well, so you like, taught me. You taught me. Infidels will pay. That's you, what my balls, you were my the balls were like. <laughs> you were the person that taught me about grooming. That's right. You don't tell don't the story. Around. Tell the story. Listen, dog. Hey, all you vatos in there. I like you vatos. Listen, when it's time to clip that shit, don't shave it straight up. Because if it's just bald down there, then that's, there's some dysfunction uh -huh. and then you get the mira razor bumps and it looks right. like you got the la pimples and you can get and you can get infections and things fuck that get four years gangrene you guys have seen pictures of that gangrene dog yeah hey so so but but you remember you used to i used hair conditioner where'd you get it i stole it from a white lady when where? i was doing landscaping where in beverly hills right and she was keels right <laughs> it was dope it made my it gave my balls luster uh, like turtle wax or some shit. And when you put it on your round flower. How did you know it would work? I mean, you were just looking in the bathroom window. I didn't give window. a shit. I, I was like, I bet you they paid a lot of money for this. Probably nice honey, almond, oatmeal and shit. I was like, oh, first I tasted it. But then, oh, so I rubbed it all in my, my huevos and then up yeah. in my patch. Yeah, yeah. And then I let it sit. The hair conditioner just mm. sit in the marinate, you know, with my ropes. Yes. And then... And then you were you were shaving your balls back in those days. So my you, balls, you the, listen, doc. Your balls, you shave. Yeah, and because you but said the patch, it, you don't shave it. You just trim. To quote you, you said it was like elephant skin. That's right, doc. <laughs> if I had that skin on my face, I would be a professional boxer because it's so tough. Yes. I, I want to ask you some questions. Okay. I know I if used you had to think a I was tunic Jewish. Alba I on thought your face. I was Jewish, doc. Because my uncle's name is Israel, mm. and my my primo's name is Moses. Mm. And then my brother's name is Jesus. Those are all Jews. Yeah, it's true. And I just thought for sure, dog. Yeah, and they, then they I were got, just hiding it from and you. And then I got sick foreskin, dog. I didn't know. You, you know, got my, a big foreskin. My sick foreskin, dog. Yeah. So that's when I, 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 because I had a homie. His name was uh, uh, was Yanev. Uh. And then he showed me his pito with no foreskin. Is that weird? And I was like, "What's up with that shit? With your fucking mushroom, dog?" <laughs> And he's like, what do you mean? And then he told me many stories, Old Testament. Like, and then I looked down at my, my pito and I was pulling my porch and I was like, damn, dog. And then uh, that's when I realized, I was like, oh, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. But I would have been. I like it. 
Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Well, I, I never really thought much about it. I, my, my extended family on my father's side was, but lots of talk about Hitler and Jews these days. Uh, I never really took a side. I just sort of, you know, it was part of my I don't my know. Like, is that something you have to take a side on? <laughs> no, but no, I'm going to take I mean? the non-Hitler made, made, side. Made, that's, my, that's, that's mine too. Listen, never had from to make here an, on out, everyone just know I take the non-Hitler side. That's good. Me too. But but I, I never had to make an issue of the of this. You know what I mean? And now it seems like it's you have to make an issue. Yeah, so. well. I don't want to make no issue about it, but I just want to say much love to all, especially Hainas, Jewish Hainas. I love them. Are you uh, dating anybody out here? I know, I mean, I know you're a man of great oh, passion. I'm man, dog. I know that. Look but... at this. Mira, I'm oh, yeah, married, dog. Okay? You, you behaving yourself? So why don't you just fucking keep this like an off the camera, off the microphone conversation? Okay, right. We're on camera. You're right. Fuck. Okay. Shit okay. pipe over here wants to talk about you dating anyone? <laughs> Sorry, like, buddy. my wife can't get a hold of this shit. Sorry, buddy. Okay, all right. You're right. And to be honest with you, no. I went okay. to a strip club. They got dope strip clubs here. You in, go, to, you go in to the Red Rose? Texas is insane. <laughs> I went there. I found this one high now, and I was interested. I was like, oh, you know, because, like, my boner is like a, like a dividing rod. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, it pulls and this you one, along. And this, she was a white girl, too. And I'm not normally there, but she had a big, fat ass. <laughs> and she looked, she looked like she was nasty. Okay. And she was giving me lap dances and yeah. shit. I'm like, maybe, you know, like, maybe this might be something for me to explore. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so I was like, why don't we go to the champagne room, dog? You know what I'm saying? And I stole Catherine Wood's fucking wallet. You know, I had feria. Yeah. Mm. And so I was like throwing 20s at her ass. And then she did the, the, the twerking and she backed it up. Yeah. And I saw the butthole, dog. Yeah. It was not. What no. I was looking for. Okay, good. And that's why good. I always carry a jeweler's loop in my in my in my dickies. Yeah. And I got up in there like this. What the fuck? And it was like all the 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 labia, panocha, yeah. lab lab labia mm-hmm. was all tended to. Mm. That butthole looked haggard, dog. Uh, like war torn. Well, good. I'm glad. I knew it reminded me of trucha. She looked like. You ever see like if so? Who, 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 that was my cellmate. I wrecked his butt. No, he wrecked your butt. I but the believe me, I returned the favor, dog. Really? Yeah, I let my. I Aztec, thought he was my in Aztec prison. meat sword flew. I thought you were. He was in prison. Oh, that's right. You did tell me that it, it was. It got was. Time I told went you. By. I told yeah. you about how I got Stockholm butthole. Yeah, you did. That's right. Where I learned to love it, you know, like Stockholm. the Haina who learned to love the Symbionese Liberation Army. Yes. Didn't think I pulled that one out. Did no, you? it was pretty good. <laughs> I have a test it's for you, from real the quick. Seventies with uh, I've been now, on the, I can't remember her name though. Uh, Patty Hearst. Uh, Hearst. Yeah, there you go, Patty Hearst. You, know, you don't even know about the books I read, dog. That's true. I have a I have a test for you. Okay. <clears throat> I want to see how Mexican you are. Okay. And then we got to wrap this thing up. Have you ever bought a lottery ticket scratcher? I have definitely done the scratching, so I probably bought them. Yeah. Check. Yep. Do you? I was gonna ask, do you have foreskin? But we know no. the juice. No pork, no, no foreskin, no mm. problem. No. <laughs> do you like the Raiders? I do like the Raiders. It's fucking, you're on fire. The question is, do we like them since they moved to Las Vegas? You don't it's, care. It's disorienting, right? You know, there's no need. Isn't to it get, weird though? Hey, you ever know, like, you ever meet like a 55 year old gay guy? Yeah. There's he could go to any bar in Hollywood. He but still, he still goes to the bushes and shit at the park. Uh, it's because it's, it's, it's part of how you... I see. You know what I'm saying? You, it's you don't exciting. care. The Raiders could be on Mars. Okay. okay. You grew up, everyone likes the It's just disorienting. Yeah, it's weird. I, see, but, I, okay. you, I, yeah, I like you, Raiders. <clears throat> Have you ever cashed a check anywhere besides a bank? No. <laughs> Your governor, though, believes that cash checking, the, 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 the check cashing stores are the number one problem in the state. Oh, that's yeah. That's definitely the biggest problem in fucking yeah, California. Suck yeah. my dick, dog. <laughs> Crime, public schools, nah. Don't worry homeless, about that, dog. Homeless, homeless situation. Nah. It just look gloss over that shit for checking the cash. That bottle can eat my huevos. Oh, uh, do you like cilantro? I do, especially Fuck, not, especially with uh, avocado in the guacamole. avocado. Avocado. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Try it. Um, that's a check against I me. will. I will. Check no, I'll give you credit because you tried, dog. Yeah. How do you say methamphetamine? Scante. 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 God damn, dog. How Scante. are you such a good student? Scante. <clears throat> do you like Morrissey? Yes. 
Damn, not a lot, but I, I get it. Have you ever in any time been in a complete fist fight with one of your family members? No. No. Oh, you skated on that one, though. No. Have you ever <laughs> have you ever at any moment swam with denim on? Hmm. Have you ever had denim or dicky swim trunks? Well, though? never dicky swim trunks. Oh, no. Serio. And denim, you know, I was in the desert, had to get in out of the Red Sea without a bunch of shit. But oh, you went in in jeans? Uh, it was not jeans, though. It was not jeans. What was it? Like bulletproof vest? What the there fuck? There was some sort of gear they had. Us, it was, but it was, you know, jeans-esque. Damn. Yeah. Man. I got to see. Do you have any cars parked in your in your house, but not in a driveway? No. Uh Oh. We haven't had our cars on a grass for a minute there. For on a minute, grass, dog? Yeah, we oh, did. That's, dog, that's big for ticket, a minute, dog. We don't routinely well do Caesar it, but Chavez. it happened, yeah. Shit, dog. I'm going to tell you right now, you've got a, 85%. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty Mexican, right? Steady, I think dog. some of it is just being in Los Angeles all these that's years. That's right. Like right? Kid Rock said, it's like everyone in Detroit's part black. Yeah. You know, I think everyone in LA, yeah. just, you get a little bit of it. It's like, true, right? Hey, do you eat odd parts of an animal? Uh, not that I can. Th- I, I, I'm. So, you know, Catherine told me I should eat more of that stuff. Yeah, but pancreas. he's talking about that vo- modern Pan- hipster shit. Pancreas and brain yeah, and stuff. Like liver. Yeah, no, I'm talking he, about my grandma makes soup with fucking elbows. No, and or de- brains or, and or shit. Be- no. Beaks or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's sick. Dog, yeah, the chicken toes. Rudy, it's so good to see you. You seem to be thriving out here, right, but dog. I worry about your substance use, my friend. Let's. Uh, we're gonna. Don't worry, doc. Don't worry. I don't hey, want like, you back uh, in the pen. Come on, they said he's a Bobby McFerrin, doc. Don't worry, be happy. All right, you know what I'm saying. But the other day, I did think that a Hot Pocket was a frog. Mm. And it fucked my whole day up. Right? Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, good to see you, my friend. Just stay out of trouble. What? What are you pointing at? The camera? Uh, look camera, yeah. There it is. Suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get, get Catherine. Get him in here for a second. Okay, we got to wrap this show up. Uh, gentlemen, uh, this was a fun show. Is it? I'm really going to get arrested out here. Yeah, I he, hope so. I'm tired of fucking paying his rent. I, he he didn't mean me to go home. He's living in my garage. There's a goat in there. I, take care of his family. Go go home. You know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't say that to him, but I'm a little worried about him. Yeah, his so, wife only has one leg. Well, it's a, a story for another day. Mike, thank you for being here. Tell Always me, a pleasure. Tell me where to go. Mikey likes you. Is the what, best. What are they going to hear there? The best health and fitness podcast in the world ever. Ever. Okay, it's comprehensive health and fitness, mental health, uh, addiction. Obviously, you know, training and nutrition, but a lot of talk about uh, habit forming and mental health and stuff like that. A lot of your, a lot of your training stuff is on Instagram. Absolutely. What is At that? Mike Catherwood. And if you're interested in more, perhaps uh, detailed assistance, you can always check out my Patreon. I'm Mike Catherwood on Patreon. Mike Catherwood, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll Thank see you all so next much. time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.